Well, I had a customer bring me an Adcom, a GCD575 CD player with 176.4 kilohertz sampling rate. Wow. Let's take a look at this thing. Pretty nice looking unit. Big old heavy duty buttons out here. Look at the size of those things. But let's go ahead and power this thing on. And it reads the table of contents and it appears to be plain. So I'll hit stop over here. And watch this when I try to reject it. Listen closely. And then I get an E. Most likely error. It will try to open, but it's not actually opening. Maybe we can help it. Nope. Well, let's pop it open. See if we can find a worn belt, most likely. Just take a look at this board. Nicely laid out. I wish I hadn't used that glue. That stuff becomes conductive and corrosive. It does damage over time. But just beautiful looking top side at least. There's the mechanism over here. Look at the size of that power transformer back here. Look at all those leads. Holy moly. Power switch, conditioning board, big old choke, and that metal oxide varistor right there. Pretty nicely designed looking CD player to say the least. There's the processor main microcontroller right there. Nippon Electric Corporation. Well, let's see if we can get the mechanism out of this thing and see what might be going on. So I'm going to start by just simply taking off this ground screw right here. Next, we'll listen to those three screws that hold the mechanism down. Once we've got the ground screw removed back here, you can see if it'll just lift kind of up and out diagonally. Let's see what we have down here. Well, it does have a Sony pickup, a KSS-150. So let's look for a shorting tab. There it is right there. So I'm going to put a solder blob across that before I do anything else. That way it will allow me to unplug these connectors without fear of damaging the optical pickup. Okay, there are the solder pads on the bottom of the optical pickup. Let's just go ahead and bridge those with some solder. Just like that. Now there's a dead short across the laser diode so that if we unplug everything, there's no chance for ESD electrostatic discharge to damage this unit. Okay, so now that I have the laser diode unplugged, I went ahead and just unplug the optical pickup completely. And then I'm just going to rotate this gear right here. You can see it moves. But I want to make sure the disc is not going to be damaged. So I'm going to rotate it. And very carefully try to let the drawer open. And I'll take the disc out and set it aside for my customer so it does not get damaged. And so now we need to look at getting the drawer completely out of this unit because the belt is going to be down under this cover right here. So I went ahead and pulled the cover off the top, the clamp assembly right here, just two screws holding it on, one on each side, and then just go ahead and zip these guys out right there. Now we should be able to just gently pull the drawer back, and it does completely come off just like that. Now we need to go ahead and pull this screw out and then these two tabs should just release right here to let us gain access to the belt. There we go. Oh, look at that. I think I found the problem. Okay, well I think I found a suitable replacement belt. This one is actually a brand new belt that I ordered somewhere. It came from China probably. But I went ahead and I've ordered this belt kit with like 40 different size belts in it. And this was one of, there's the part number on there. If you can find it on eBay or Amazon, I think I got it from eBay. But we'll hit it with some magical solution acetone. We'll clean the pulleys off as well. And then we'll install the new belt.
There it is, looks great. Next, we'll just go ahead and clean the pulleys with some acetone and a cotton swab. There we go, should be good as new. No twists, no kinks whatsoever. Let's go ahead and put it back together now. And then we'll do a final cleaning and lubrication. We'll uh, lubricate the sled mechanism and we'll clean the optical pickup. And then if I can, yes, I can. I will add a droplet of oil down here to the motor shaft, right down in there to the bushing. And we'll go ahead and move the laser out of the way right here. Then we'll just add a droplet of oil to the bushing down here for the turntable motor. I'll run it around a few times and lift it up and down. Then I'll grab a cotton swab and wipe up the excess oil. Let it sop it up so it's down in the bushing. That's all that is needed. All right, let's go ahead and mostly reassemble this thing and plug in the optical pickup, remove the solder jumper that I just put on there. Okay, so we should be able just to wipe this jumper off of the board now that everything's plugged back in. There they are, unbridged at this point. Let's put it back together, clean the optical pickup and give it a test. Well, there is the optical pickup. A little bit of dust on it, not too terribly bad. Let's go ahead and hit it with a cotton swab and some regular household glass cleaner. Nothing with ammonia. Okay, cotton swab just moistened with glass cleaner, not soaked, not dripping. You do not want it to drip down inside the unit. Very, very light pressure and always circular motions when scrubbing the lens. Well, it certainly looks much, much better. Less dust, less fuzz. Well, let's go ahead and put a couple of drops of oil on the sled mechanism, put this thing back together, and hopefully call it good. So normally they use a lot of white lithium grease on these units. I've had very good luck just putting little droplets of oil on the shaft. And then I'll go ahead and run this out. Then I'll hit the shaft with some light oil once again, some very fine machine oil. And the sled will run it all back. Let's go lubricate the bushing and let this thing slide very, very freely. Okay, let's power this thing up, put a disc in it, and see if it plays. Okay, here we go. Customer disc is in the unit. Let's close the drawer. Make sure it loads. It seemed to read the table of contents just fine. Let's hit play. Yep, it's absolutely playing fine. Let's get through some of the tracks. So it says there are 15 tracks on this unit. Let's go to 15, make sure it plays the last track. And it does. But that's it, the repair on the ADCOM GCD575. Just needed a simple belt to be replaced. I certainly hope you enjoyed this video. Go ahead and leave me a question, a comment, a concern down below, good or bad. I try to respond to the comments when I have time. While you're down there, hit that subscribe button and like this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, 
at NorCal715. You can email me norcal715videos at gmail.com. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.